January 1987, a period likened to the Gatsby era with the Roaring Twenties had brought opportunities to traders never seen before. But there was one trader who stood out from the rest, whose trading style capitalised on the boom and soon to be bust of the market. His name, Tudor Jones. Paul Tudor Jones. He was about to do something that even the most experienced of traders would only experience in their dreams. Capture 5 years of 100% returns or more consecutively. No losing years. Looking at his track record, in 1985 he would achieve 136% return, in 1986 99% and in 1987 he would capitalise on one of the biggest black swan events ever to occur in the market the Black Monday crash. While some traders lost their life savings, Jones made a whopping 200% return. While I was studying this rare individual, I came across a piece of writing that said, Jones has done what many thought impossible. Combine five consecutive triple digit return years with very low equity retracements. I managed to verify across multiple sources what his returns were in 85, 86, 87 and in 1990. However, I could not find his exact returns in 1988 or 1989. But considering what his returns were in prior years, it's more than possible that he did achieve 100 plus percentage returns in those two years as well. But how did he make this great feat? To answer this, we need to go back in time, understand the market back then, and understand the eccentric mind of Tudor Jones. After a depressing 1970s with high inflation and the falling stock market, the 80s was poised for growth. Businessmen had been beaten to the ground and were left hungry for profits. All of the pain and misery felt in the 70s would be the perfect bouncing board for the boom of the next decade. Reaganomics was working a charm with low taxes and high spending boosting the economy. In turn, the stock market felt its tailwind. It became the perfect place to make a fortune. From early 1980, the Dow went from 2,480 points to 6,900 just five years later. An ideal breeding ground for a new trader to make money. But not just any trader, the trader would have to be unique. He would have to shirk off the lessons taught by the pessimists who had gone through the 70s and instead think for himself to adjust to the new economy. He'd have to be adaptive to new trading technologies and algorithms and importantly, he would need to be prepared for events that were about to shake the world. Tudor Jones was the right man at the right time in the right place. Formerly a welterweight boxing champion, could adapt to any tough situation. He'd just finished university and wanted to become a trader. Location, the business capital of the world, New York, USA. Right time, right man, right place. A lot of young people when they finish university, they don't know what to do. Not Jones. He had one thing on his mind, green paper. His love for Monopoly and poker, he wanted to bring into real life. I had a friend that I played backgammon with in college all the time. And I've always liked backgammon chess, those type of games. And he said, if you think those are fun, I'll show you a game that, that is the most exciting, the most challenging of all. Jones knew that trading was for him, but the question was how does he get an opportunity to start? The hardest time to get a job is usually when you're young and have no experience. Luckily for a fresh Tudor Jones, his uncle Billy is a successful cotton merchant. Billy sends him to an acquaintance who's a cotton trader in New Orleans. Like a duck to water, he now has the perfect environment to begin mastering his dream craft. But he doesn't get into it right away. He starts from the bottom as a floor clerk where he gets to learn the business. Wax on, wax off. Jones can practice in his mind and see what works and what doesn't without losing money. Hmm, he notices the best traders are decisive. They're forceful in personality. They know when to execute and when to change their mind. They're greedy, but not too greedy. They're fully immersed in the game, always thinking, where is the trend heading or where's my chance to make money? The former champion welterweight and poker player knew this was perfect for him. His mix between alpha male qualities and intellectual insatiability were ideal ingredients to dominate the industry. And this is exactly what he does. 
He moves from floor clerk to floor trader, and from 1980 until 1984, he trades on the cotton exchange, only experiencing one losing month. Most kids his age cannot fathom the amount that he is making. I was making a seven figure income at the age of 27, 28, but it is boring, he remarks. Although ridiculously good at his job, he hates the isolation of it. He misses the team environments that he used to be in as a kid. The sports, the fraternities, he craves that camaraderie and he hates the seclusion of floor trading. How can he combine his love for teams with his passion and ability for trading? There's only one answer, he needs to start his own fund. In 1984 he forms Tudor Futures Fund with $1.5 million in assets under management. He now has a team to work with of not only employees, but clients as well. Very wealthy clients. If he can continue his trading success with their money, not only his own, his net worth can skyrocket. If he fails however, then he's got some very angry, very powerful, very wealthy clients on his back. While most people his age would crack under these levels of pressure, Jones the Alpha loves it. His specific trading style is about to help him achieve the White Rhino, five consecutive years of 100 plus percentage returns. While a lot of market participants focus on the fundamentals and looking at the underlying business, Jones's strategy is different. PEs, book value, intrinsic value, he throws into the trash and just focuses on the charts. He uses two key tactics to profit from these charts. One is mean reversion, the second is playing the momentum trend game. Mean reversion is a way of analyzing charts where you predict that the price will at some point revert back to its mean. The goal for mean reversion traders is to wait for price to skew away from the mean, buy it or short it, and then profit when it goes back to the mean. However, Jones's preferred style was not mean reversion, although he acknowledged there's plenty of money in it. His strategy was momentum trend trading. Here you find the direction the stock is heading, then you ride the particular direction of the stock. Easier said than done, the big question is how do you spot reliably, consistently, which direction the trend is heading? Jones knew the only way he would win this game is through full immersion. Any trader that was half in, half out would inevitably get wiped out. Knowing this, Jones worked hard, long days, often weekends as well, to consistently forecast the trend. You need that big trading energy. Trading requires an energy level and it's very difficult to sustain it. 24 hours a day, which is what this requires. And his strategies worked. In 1985, Tudor's first full year of trading, he returned 136%. Second year, 99%. Reaganomics, the 80s boom, and his trading style were a perfect combination, a match made in heaven. But the third year would be the year that revealed all. A once in a lifetime event was about to occur that would devastate the lives of a lot of traders. Jones's first few years in business had been a breeze, but it wasn't just Jones making money, it seemed like most traders were finding these market conditions quite easy. Although they weren't making the crazy returns like Jones was, it was still simple to make small fortunes. Almost too simple. Easy strategies like following the news, swing trading, scalp trading, all seemed to be profitable. But Jones sitting at his desk saw that something wasn't quite adding up. Making money is not this easy, especially not for every Joe Smo in the stock market. We can't all be millionaires. Something surely is about to change. All of Wall Street right now, the investment community at large, basically is geared towards a Dow somewhere in the 2600 to 3200 range. Let's assume that they are 100% wrong. If nothing else, there will be a point in time, unquestionably, when the market turns down, it's going to be the, uh, the famous Acapulco cliff dive. Just a question of how fast before we hit the bottom. Prior to this, Jones had made his bank by avoiding fundamentals and sticking to the charts. But now he knows that he has to switch and go deep into the fundamentals. So he begins to do some research. 
Hmm. There's a rapid rise in debt levels and bank leverage. There's stress growing in oil and farm areas. But corporate liquidity, that's very low. So there's no cash to save investors if things go bad. From a fundamentals perspective, the market looks like it's been built from straw, not bricks. But then his research director, Peter Borish, brings him something that tips him over the edge. The last great bull market really was the 1920s. And we looked back and did a statistical analysis on the 1920s through today to run correlations between what happened in 1925 to 1928 to what happened between 1982 and where we were in 1986. Well, that correlation turned out to be over 90%. He has compiled data which compares the stock markets of the 1920s to the 1980s. The results are erringly similar. The 1920s is the graph on the right and the 1980s is the graph on the left. Both periods of time come across almost like a twin set of data, over a 90% correlation. The only problem is that Jones and Borish and anyone who knows history knows what occurred at the end of the 20s. Begins with great, ends in depression. Just like the Roaring Twenties, it starts very good, but when you least expect it, something bad comes. But the question is when? When will the tipping point be? Friday the 16th of October 1987, Jones would get his answer. 10 year risk free rates had gone to 10.5%, but the dividend yield on the riskier stock market was about 45 to 5%. The stock market was clearly significantly overvalued, at least compared to assets like bonds. And that Friday, something unusual was happening. There was record trading volumes going on in the markets, but this time it was on the downside. This was the smoke signal that Jones needed. The next time that the market would open, his instincts, gut research, everything was telling him havoc would occur. He knew he had to prepare. In fact, better than prepare, profit. There will be some type of a decline, without a question, in the next 10 to 20 months, and it will be uh, earth-shaking, it will be saber-rattling, and it'll have Wall Street in a tizzy, and it will create headlines that will be, uh, that will dwarf anything that's happened at this point in time. So he sets up a big short against stocks, and on the other side, takes a long position in the bond market. If Jones's prediction is right, Unfortunately, a lot of traders will get hurt, but at least he and his clients will do just fine. This was one of the most exciting times of Jones's life. The unknown, the money on the table, the what could happen. He was sure that he was right, but was he really sure? Only the market would tell. Days, I'm sure, felt like months as the market closed in the weekend, but that Monday would be one of the craziest days in market history. Today is Black Monday, the day the Dow dropped more than 500 points. Well, the law of gravity hit Wall Street today and financial markets around the world for that matter. Black Monday, the Dow plunged 22.6%. Panic traders worked through lunch hours in a desperate but losing attempt. Even worse than Jones predicted, the market tanks. The biggest single day drop in history takes place as the market goes down 22%. Worldwide losses are estimated at 1.71 trillion. The Dow Jones Industrial Average falls 508 points. The New York Stock Exchange loses more than 500 billion in market cap. But one of the few traders who comes through unscathed is PTJ. Once the panic subsides, he covers his shorts and walks away with a 62% return in a single month. That year, he breaks his previous record and makes a 200% return. His strategy has paid off. He sees that any trader can make money when the bull market is raging, but traders who can take a step back, look at the bigger picture, and know when to adapt strategies when needed will outperform the rest over the long run.